Naam basi ndio kama hivyo basi mjadala wa kwanza wa wagombea urais umekamilika dakika chache tu zilizopita mjadala uliohusisha wagombea watatu nao ni Dr. Ekuru Aukoto wa Thirdway Alliance Dr. Japheth Kavinga Kaluyu mgombea huru na vile vile Profesa Mwalimu Michael Wainaina vile vile mgombea huru wote wakiweza kuuza sera zao kwa wananchi japo kupitia kwa maswali kutoka kwa aliyekuwa kiongoza kipindi hicho Ivono Kwara bila shaka licha ya kwamba wagombea wengine watatu hawakuweza kufika watatu hao wameweza kuzungumza mpana mna marefu tu kuhusiana na maswali walioweza kuulizwa na bila shaka imekuwa ni ufanisi tu eh, katika mjadala huu wa kwanza ambao umeandaliwa kupitia kwa hisani ya kamati ya andalizi inayoshughulikia kamati ya kuandaa mijadala ya urais kamati ambayo inasimamiwa na bwana Washira Waruru uh, mwanzangu uh, kanze tena ni mengi tu ambao wameweza kujadili bila shaka, uh, bila shaka ni maswali ambayo yalikuwa yamepangwa vizuri unahisi je kwa sasa hivi mtazamaji anapiga kura ambaye hakuweza uh, kuwa amekata shauri uh, kuwa atampigia nani ameweza kupata fursa nzuri ya kuwatazama hawa watatu na kuweza pengine kuwa na maono mazuri kuhusiana na tarehe nane Agosti bila shaka ni mbroda lazima amepata zamu na nafasi ya kuweza kujua ni nani ambaye itakuwa ameweza kumrai maana yake ameweza kukusia swala la elimu swala la ukabila swala la utangamano yote yakiwa ni mambo ambayo mkenya anataka yapewe kipo mbele bila shaka pia kusita kusema kuhusu ufisadi ambao unaendelea kuwa mnyama ndani ya taifa hili kwa hivyo bila shaka natumai kwamba wote watatu kila mtu ameweza kujitetea vilivyo kulingana na jinsi ambavyo ameeleza kwamba ataweza kuongoza uh, taifa hili asa mdahalo huo wa kwanza umekwisha umesalia ule mdahalo wa pili pia wakiwa bado wanataka kuwarai wa Kenya kuhusiana na kura mmoja akiwa anatafuta kura ya kuendelea kubaki rais na mwingine akiwa anatafuta nafasi ya kuweza kuongoza taifa hili kwa hivyo bila shaka tunazungumzia nani ni mrod bila shaka tunamzungumzia rais Uhuru Kenyatta wa chama cha Jubilee na vile vile mpinzani wake Raila Odinga ambaye ni mgombea ama mpeperushaji bendera mm -hmm. ya muungano wa NASA ambao tunawatazamia uh, waweze kufika kwa mdahalo huu ambao umepangiwa kuanza saa mbili mm -hmm. uh, usiku hivi Nyuma tu tu nafikiri watazamaji wanaweza kuona kwamba kuna pilka pilka nyingi mm -hmm. eh, wageni wakiweza kuingia na wengine kutoka nje mm -hmm. lakini kwa hivi sasa wana muda mfupi tu uh, kuweza kujipumzisha kabla ya mdahalo huo muhimu kuweza kuanza saa mbili kwa hivyo moja kwa moja mm -hmm. atakapoteza muda bali tunakupeleka moja kwa moja kwa mwenzetu Larry Mado Asante sana Kanze and Nimrod were still out here it is debate night in Kenya we're now just 40 minutes away from the second of the two presidential debates we're expecting like Kanze and Nimrod mentioned President Uhuru Kenyatta and NASA leader Raila Odinga. Before that, can we make sense of what just happened as we look forward to that? Joining me on the panel right now, Dr. Alex Owich is back with us, Director of the East African Institute, and Nerima Wako, Executive Director of the CSA Place. Professor James Olekiap, who ran for president last time, is still with us. Daisy Mdang, women rights activist, and Miguna Miguna, who is running for governor in the great county of Nairobi. I want to get your immediate reactions to the debate we just saw between these three people. Nerima, you go first. Well, this is the first time we've had a debate where each one of them is a professor, very educated. Um, for me, because I'm passionate about young people, I wanted to hear what they had to offer for youth. And one of the issues was the youth agenda. Yes. Did they handle it well? Um, a little bit kind of sort of. I believe like Ikuru talked about having um, a parliament where a third of the representation will be youth and also i think it's an issue to have young people involved in policy making processes that's something that's important we talk about job creation all the time but i don't think we understand that kenya produces one million young people looking for employment every year so it should be not the last agenda of the debate but the first agenda because i think it's a serious issue okay dr witty what are your impressions of this first debate well i'm not terribly impressed uh, i had some passionate appeals. They showed up. There was some effort. They talked three about showed up. Three did not show up. Three showed up. Joe Yaga, Mohamed Abdul Badida, Cyrus Jirongo were no show. It's better than last time. Uh, they talked about the manifestos. They expressed frustration just like everybody else. So this was like a, a, a wine fest. Uh, they're just whining around. But I, I did not see preparedness. I did not see anything that would convince me that they have capacity to govern this country. They're very long on the whining and complaining, but very short on the specifics about how they would deal with things. You know, to, to provide as a definitive analogy the, to the problem of corruption, this mbuzi thing is, is, is atrocious. You know, it, 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 it's a very simplistic way to talk about a very complex social problem, a social, political, economic governance problem. 
and I think are you saying it, that it betrays a lack of preparedness. They were just not ready. They're not ready to compete at this level. We're looking to talk to Mbuzi and Wale Wamba Wali Bambuzi. That's it. That's it. So Kenya, the fact that it was delivered in Swahili but means even more people can relate so, with it. So what? So what? You've told us that you're looking for the good from the people who stole the good, and then what happens? Miguna, Miguna, what are your impressions of the debate? Well, I have to say, Larry, that Abduda, um, Abduda. Abduda Deda. Abduba Deda, yes. Abduda Deda. Abduba Dupa Deda. Yes. You see, I can't even pronounce his name because he was a no show. <laughs> Joseph Nyaga and Cyrus Girongo have demonstrated that they shouldn't even have been cleared by the IEP. <laughs> uh, because they're not ready even to debate, leave alone to assume the highest office in the land. So these guys uh, shouldn't get any votes as far as I'm concerned. Secondly, Dr. Kaluyu is the greatest disappointment uh, during this debate. Why? Uh, because the man spoke a lot but said absolutely nothing. The man is ambiguous, general, and empty. He called himself a punda, a dog, and a man with a sling, and could not decide which one defines him. He said Pundas should support other Pundas. There is no real tangible plan the man unveiled. And in fact, I believe it is a great disappointment and a throwback from Carriera last week. In fact, Carriera should have been the presidential candidate and Kaluyu could have been the deputy. Because Carriera was clear, Carriera was precise, Carriera was confident. This man was a bubble. Uh, really a man about nothing. He was completely clueless. Uh, the second disappointment was Professor Wainaina. Um, this issue, I agree with uh, Dr. Waiti. Uh, corruption is not about a goat. To say that corruption is a goat is really not to even understand the depth of the problem, the gravity of the problem. He talked even about an though, unholy trinity of tribalism, impunity, and corruption, and he promised to slay it. He, he didn't say how he was going to slay it, and the examples he gave on how he thought he would, go, he, he would slay it just did not sound as... Okay. It, it, they were not concrete, they were not thought out. All right. Dr. Ikuruok Eckhart uh, performed better than them. Uh, but again, he glossed over a lot of issues, but All it right. was much, much better than them. Daisy, your first impressions of the first debate? Well, my first impression is um, this is why the debates are valuable, because we really get to get a glimpse into the candidates who have been promising Kenyans a better future. And from the three candidates, I want to agree with Awiti that uh, what we've seen is a lack of preparedness. In fact, I think other than Dr. Ekuru, who showed that at least he's got some kind of, you know, uh, uh, plan, you know. Um, the rest were just uh, giving us uh, sound bites without any concrete material. But um, one of the things that I note with concern is that they are so centered on their manifestos and not so much the constitution and the rule of law in Kenya because when Dr. Ekuru was talking about a benevolent dictator, you know, and especially being one of, uh, you know, the, the secretary to the constitution of uh, Kenya Commission, uh, the COE, the yes, Committee, of, Committee Experts, of Experts, that he doesn't see the value in institutions building those institutions and following through on the rule of law, you know, but rather a heavy-handed approach to um, leadership. His argument uh, for a benevolent dictatorship is that his exact quote is Kagame's Rwanda does not condone bribery and yes, therefore it works. That's fine, but because it is leadership but also institutions at work, the rule of law, penalize it, use the institutions that are available. You don't need to be a dictator. They should not be uh, democracy and um, anti corruption should not be mutually exclusive. It should be part of our democracy. Wainaina is talking about envisioning a new Kenya. That is what the Constitution of Kenya does. It actually envisions a different narrative, a more inclusive one. So to, dis to tell us that it is your manifesto that envisions a new Kenya, clearly they have not interacted with the Constitution of Kenya itself. And um, I, I didn't hear anything about enforcing leadership standards, okay. the standards of uh, leadership and integrity. But by and large, for me, 
I think Ekuru has performed uh, better than, or you know, the, the So the you two agree on Ekuru having performed yes, better than yes, the other two in candidates? in terms of some concrete, uh, you know, direction. Professor oh, Kiyapi, you... Specifically about... We'll come back to that. Yeah. Professor yeah. Kiyapi, I'm you have been on that stage. What did you think? I think the first thing I have to say is that, I mean, I must congratulate them for showing up to honor the country. But this narrative that we always present, that we are the alternative, we are... These guys did not demonstrate that they understand what is going on in Kenya. There was no real depth in anything. And I expected them to, to dig into the system, because you cannot fix a system that you don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, you cannot say, I'm new, I'm the new guy, I'm the new kid on the block, I'm going to fix everything, education, corruption. But you don't tell us in the first place what is actually wrong with corruption. Why are those who are in the system unable to sort out the, the, the issue? So for me, that was a frustration that there was no specific area where they had sufficient knowledge of what is happening, and therefore what needs to, to change. Professor Wainaina, for instance, even had his research done to the point of referring to an article that Musalia Mudavidi wrote in the Standard back in 10th August 2016 talking about the political class in court and Jubilee then suffer from gangsterism. So he was talking about those that are now running and offering alternatives have also called their, their now partners different colorful in, names. In, in, in fact, um, Yvonne Okwara yes. challenged him mm -hmm. that you are saying, they say, they say, they say, what do you say? Mm -hmm. And let me give you an example. I mean, the issue of corruption. All of them basically say the same thing. But you are not going to solve corruption in Kenya by saying, I'm going to give leadership. Everybody has been saying that. Or we are going to make sure um, we enforce the rule of law. Everybody has been say, uh, saying that. But if you are really looking for a practical solution to corruption in Kenya, you need three things, and I have been reflecting on it. Number yes. one, the president needs to call everybody to order, including himself. Calling to order means you're telling people, we are going to be serious about this matter. And how are you going to be serious? You do the second thing. What is the second thing? That you must ensure everybody is audited before they, they take office, and they are willing to be audited. We used to have and declarations of wealth. No, 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 wealth no, no, that was, no, no, that 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 was self That was self-declaration. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We, we want audit, audit of what it is you have, and we audited every other year. And how did you make it? How did you acquire how did you it? Make Not just what okay. you have, but how you how came you? about it. And the third thing? And the third thing is that corruption itself, no, I actually, let, let me think about that again, because I, it, I have lost that. <laughs> the third thing has disappeared in no, the wind. No, but I'm going to tell you about it as we, we just okay. discussed. Okay, fair enough. I want to... You, they too felt that uh, Dr. Okoto represented himself best. I didn't get your analysis overall. Well, so I read his manifesto. Yes. And I think it's, it's, it's an atrocious... It's one of the most glamorous displays of an inability to understand how government functions. He talks about reducing, eliminating VAT, imposing a 3% uh, sales tax on goods and services, he is lowering the minimum taxable wage. He is increasing the minimum taxable wage to 30,000 shillings. So, in a sense, if you look at his fiscal plan, he's defunding government. And yet he's got a slew of social programs that he wants to fund, including free education, waiving tuition across the education level from primary... So his social to programs cannot be financed they, by his plan in the manifesto? He doesn't have the money. He's defunding the government that he expects to pay for these things. Okay. So I, I think that, in my view, that just displays lack of fruitfulness in terms of how he's going to craft his administration. And, and, and that, to me, basically dismantles every plan that he puts on the table. So who represented and himself best? Because he can't pay for it. None of them. The other guy, so my characterization of them is as follows. There is a guy who is an autocrat. He does not believe in the institutions of this country. Right. He actually says he will institute an international commission to deal with corruption. The other guy says he's a sheriff. The other guy says he's a gold thief hunter. No, so how, 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 how do you run a country by these guys? What have they been doing for the last six months preparing for this job? Nothing. Okay. Professor Kiyad, the yes, point is back. It's a very important point. Yes, sir. You don't allow people in public service to do business with government. In fact, if you have a company 
or you have whatever business, one of the things you must declare is that for the time that you are in office, you will not do any business whatsoever with government and even at all. Because you have to choose between two. So public servants must be, must be barred from doing business with yes. government? Yes. And, and I have to therefore debunk that uh, Debra's report that said that you can be in, in, in public service and at the same time you have 10 companies. Okay. That's where the problem is. Who, de who did best, do you think, Nerumai? Well, I think that uh, Professor Wainaina talked about inclusion most of the times, but I also felt that Dr. Kalui was a bit uh, out of touch. <laughs> somehow, yes. <laughs> so, somehow he lost us and then he came back. But then what I want to say that I, agree, I agreed with him was the fact that he talked about corruption not just being financial. because. A lot of young people suffer this. Just walking in town, a friend of mine yesterday was harassed by the police. Right. There's that corruption. So do we talk about police reform, which was not even done, better salaries for them? What I was surprised was not talked about was public wages. As, as soon as we just saw SRC has reduced their wages. But that's not enough. It's still too high. I believe so. So I think if there are people who are serious about leading the country better, we have to talk about public wastage okay. and accountability. Before we go, go back to the panel, I want to just read some of your comments real quick because hashtag debates KE is where you've been chiming in on your thoughts on the debate. This was, I think, looking forward to the next debate, the 8 p.m. debate moderated by Lena Skekai and Joe Ageo, featuring President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga. Akoko Felix, how do you expect the president to attend the debate? He cannot risk any humiliation by a common monenshi. I, I think that just betrays okay. uh, the, the, the lack of appreciation of what the presidency is. The presidency is not just uh, the, the highest office in the land. The president is a servant of the people. Okay. He represents the people. He's the embodiment of Kenya and Kenyans and must feel obligated to account to Kenyans okay. for the billions or, or now trillions of shillings that they have given him to preside over and to be able to deliver services with. Okay. So, so he, he can't say uh, that the president would be humiliated in a debate. If you are not prepared for a debate, you are not prepared to lead. It's as simple as that. Okay, so a few more comments real quick, because there were so many of them ha on hashtag debates KE. Mushemi Monjore, if you can't face your fellow competitors in debate, how can you face challenges facing Kenyans? Big question to those who have not attended. In this first debate, Joe Nyaga, Mohamed Abdul Badida, and uh, Cyrus Jirongo, I want to... This is Marie Gloria. With all due respect, I think Dr. Kalui is overwhelmed. He's not answering the question. Instead, he's giving us his history abroad. Lynn Ngugi says, The moment you realize Dr. Ikuro Okot makes such a great presidential candidate and you wonder why we dwell on Raila and Uhuru. Wangoi Keely says, Dr. Kalui is an animated debater. Dr. Okot has the advantage of being familiar. And Professor Wainaina thinks we're primitive. Gadara says, These folks sound like they want to replace... Uh, sound like those they want to replace so far zero specific policies on ending corruption all they have is trust me <laughs> moya Laurent says the trio should just form a coalition and face the two horses they present similar issues yes <laughs> that is a sense somebody got from watching these three and ruth mutegi says these three candidates keep referring to each other's answers as good example if they agree so much why not join forces so somebody else also said that and finally Eli Kurgat, ask questions on real issues, unemployment, importing toothpicks, entrepreneurship. We're so talking about the questions that are being asked and the topics that we're getting covered right here. We've got colleagues all across the Catholic University of Eastern Africa listening to the guests and preparing for the second debate. I want to take you back right there. Who do we have out there standing? That's Duncan Haimba and uh, Catherine Achienga speaking to the guests, guys. <laughs> Indeed, you are watching this proceedings live from the Catholic University of East Africa, and we're still at the guest lounge where we have invited guests who have had an opportunity to be able to follow this particular broadcast live from various screens that have been mounted within this room. Well, they have been watching what has been happening, and a lot of them had uh, the expectations fulfilled, some of them feeling uh, that they did not meet up the expectations. Of course, many have described this as a battle of the dawns within this particular room. So we'll be able to get their 
reaction and find out exactly what it is they felt about this particular debate. Uh, remember the guests who are here are expected to also move into the auditorium for the 8 p.m. debate. Uh, therefore, most of them have already begun to move out, uh, awaiting uh, that particular debate. But I'm here with the Duncan Hayembe, and I also want to give him an opportunity to be able to interact with some of the guests who are in the guest zone. Over to you, Hayembe. Yes, the Battle of Dawns indeed. In 2013, we had one dawn. 2017, we are having three. But I think we'll have to engage a political analyst, Gabriel Mudoma, just to tell us exactly what his thoughts are in, as far as uh, what is being referred as a Battle of Dawns now turned politicians. What do you think? How did it go down? Uh, uh, thank you, Kayamba. Well, for, for, for starters, I think there's one thing that came out, and I'm agreeing with the panelists of what they are saying. Uh, you saw what they were talking about, you know, uh, how to amplify the presidency. And I like what Miguna Miguna is saying. The presidency, when you look at it, it is a serious political ecosystem. So you do not come with, with, with a kind of, uh, of, of, of rapport that we've seen these three candidates come out, uh, come out with. But let me, give them, let me give them something. I'll give them a 10 point each for showing up. I mean, it takes a lot of nerve to come and you know, to, to, to come and be able to present and actually even talk about your manifesto. But the other thing, really, it was a, it was a little bit, uh, you know, where you, where you could say they were just stacking the, stacking the deck. Let me call that. If you're expecting the president to come so that you can get kicks, I think then you failed. And probably what I would say from what I've been able to see, uh, if they are looking for a job, I think the three of them, they should apply for the Ministry of Education. We had three educationists, and they didn't do a good job. For well, uh, that is uh, analyst uh, Gabriel Mudum, of course, uh, giving us his thoughts, of course, on how the uh, Battle of Dons went down. But now we'll have to toss over to Larry over there to take us through on what we are expecting in the next few minutes. Over to you, Larry. Many things were just 21 minutes out from that second debate featuring President Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga that will be moderated by Lena Kaikai and Joe Geo. Before that, by the way, Miguna, we've got a comment about you. You're not one of the candidates, but somebody wrote in helpfully. I wonder if you will agree. This is a Danish Speaks. Your futures in political analysis. Forget about everything else and focus on that. Objective, bold. <laughs> no, but you see, he doesn't understand that if you don't... Uh, analysis means somebody understands the issues, and that's what is needed in leadership. People think that a leader is a robot that is fed by advisors. I mean, if you're going to be fed by advisors, then the advisors should contest and run for office. If you have no clue, and you're saying, like uh, my opponent at the gubernatorial uh, seat. You are fantastic with your game. No, 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 please, yes. please, listen. <laughs> he says Igafe is going to run the, the affairs of the county and he's going to be the political head. There is no such thing. Okay. So the comment is misguided. He should be happy that a man who understands the issues is also running. Fantastic. We don't want to talk about Nairobi because Miguna would have a lot to say about the city. Doctor, we so, want to go back to the debate. Yeah. So let's, see, let's get a little bit more specific. Because I, you know, I spent the, all of my morning today on my, on my employer's uh, dime. dime talking about <laughs> this thing, so we should talk about it. So, Wainaina has a, an interesting sexy slogan, youthify and modernize Kenya. Mm -hmm. It's shallow, <laughs> it's, it's nothing. <laughs> then he, he talks about reinventing just about everything. So here's one example. He wants to create the biggest youth skills and talent development center on earth, number one. Then he wants to create the Millennial University of Kenya for the best minds. We have a ton of universities here. We have schools, we have polytechnics, we have universities. Why can't we make these institutions work? What is this reinventing institutions? And Ikuro also has another thing about creating an international system for prosecuting corrupt people. These people don't believe in our system. As, as Professor Kiapi said, they're trying to run for office in a context they do not understand. So they are just completely unprepared. It is a waste of everybody's time. They should go out and find things that they can do for which they're better prepared, not this job. It is not trivial to govern this country. To say that corruption is like a goat that you're going to search for in people's villages <laughs> is rubbish. To say that you're right. autocrat will on. then ha hang I, and Dr. kill Witi, all I want to people. cut you short because we've got an arrival right now and we want to go to somebody who's closer much. to the Indeed. scene of the action. It we were expecting many moments now. That is Mudama. That is up. not the one of the presidential it's candidates. So as soon as the real presidential it's candidates come up, we'll it's show it's you that. Scenario. I apologize to cut you. So, 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 so I'll just make the, the final point that 
As Kiapi said, these people have not been respectful to the public that is waiting for an option, for an alternative. They are not the alternative because they have not taken time to really understand the depth of the rot in the country and then present something that is a coherent plan for how to change this. The country is looking for an alternative. It is not in these three people who presented themselves here today. Which is what Professor Kiapi you started with. You didn't think there was a real alternative? No, there wasn't. <laughs> Yeah, because, 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 I mean, they could be alternative if they prepare well, but up to this point, it's not like this. there was a guy there ready to take over as president. But the point I wanted to make is that I've been listening to Jubilee Manifesto and NASA and also these guys, and everybody is telling us that they are going to give free education yes. from kindergarten to university. Larry, that is a lie and it is misleading. As we talk right now, we have about 35 to 40 percent attrition rate. Mm -hmm. Kids who enter standard one who never see class eight, who somehow drop in the system. Now, there, there are also major problems in the university because of you know, very high expansion in the last few years. And therefore, if somebody wants to really invest in education, they should first tell us how they will sort out the basic issues, such as the teacher ratio, uh, such as classrooms and just basic infrastructure, such as enough infrastructure in the universities and lecturers, before you talk about free education. And you didn't think, because we had a uni retired university professor here, <laughs> Professor Michael Wanaina, um, whether he or not a university professor can retire is a different issue altogether, Miguna. And we had Dr. Jafet Kavinga Kaluyu, who reminded us many times that he is a university dean. So you didn't think that the student First education of all, problem? I mean, when Wainaina says he, he, he retired, yes. at what age? You retire in university at 70 years old. Is he 70 years old? No. So when did he retire? He resigned. Or he just came out? A professor Therefore, does not retire. He's and, not and, a real and, professor. And as Miguna said, a professor does not retire. I was a PS of education. I even ran for presidency, but I'm back in the classroom. So at what stage does one actually retire? Okay. Yeah, I, I want to agree with uh, Professor Kiapi, particularly on the education, because one of the things that we haven't heard from any of these candidates is how they are going to link education with skills, the curriculum, but also the conditions under which students yes. are learning. Yeah. By the way, the conditions of our public education system, first of all, are unsanitary. You know that the capitation has made it so difficult for schools to be able to meet basic overheads. We have students learning in schools that do not have water, filthy toilets. The infrastructure is completely broken down. So before we start the proliferation of new schools, I think we need to address the challenges that the students are, the, the, the conditions under which students are learning, including in the higher education. The other thing that we also need to look at is we've also released our education system to almost anybody, anywhere. Yeah. We've got this, uh, there's bridge education, we've got the donors bringing in their own programs, you know, and all that. And these are things that we must address as a country. Um, Okay, I can see that. Uh, yes, I was just going moving. to interrupt you because yes. we want to get a sense of who is arriving among us.